What's going on, doll fans? It is your boy Dylan, and this is going to be my post-game analysis video of the Dolphins, Miami Dolphins versus New England Patriots at home. There is a lot to say. I'm gonna tell y'all straight off the bat that there's gonna be several instances of I told you guys, because I've I've been spelling this shit out for you, and I'll give you I'll give you all the examples. So first of all, before I get into all the stats and stuff, I told y'all that we were gonna get shellacked. I didn't realize that we were also going to get shut out at home, but we did. Um, so uh, once again, historically bad, which I also said beforehand, I told you it was, it was gonna continue to be historically bad. I told you that we were gonna get shellacked. To be fair, I didn't know we were gonna get shut out, but that just makes it worse. Um, you know, it's the first time we set more bad franchise records. Um, uh, one of which being we've never been shut out to the Patriots in a home game. Well, that's the first time now we've done that. Also, um, well, real quick, there's this tweet from Cameron Wolf. He says, one silver lining, Dolphins players clearly haven't quit. Uh, I disagree. A lot of them, I mean, sure, they were definitely getting tired uh, go, for, sur, for sure in the second half of the game and they started getting gashed. But I've been saying that all along as well, too, that the offense is going to be putrid right about that again, that the defense is going to get gashed and winded. And even when they do good things, which they did do some good things, a, a few good things, they're going to get worn down, demoralized, and, and they're just going to start getting gashed, which is exactly what happened right again there. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that at all. After losing by 49 points last week, the Dolphins lost by 43 today against the Patriots, giving them two of their three biggest losses in team history in the last two weeks. More disaster. The Dolphins have lost their first two by a combined score of 102 to 10. Absolute fucking disaster. Um, there, you know, there, there have been more reports about uh, Kenyon Drake maybe possibly getting traded. I mean, if they do it, it's just further, further disaster. Further disaster. But you know what? He whatever. Apparently, though, he asked the team and um, reporters asked him about it. He asked the team, but he declined to give a comment on it, which doesn't really bode well. Um, and so you never know. It absolutely could happen. I don't think Minka Fitzpatrick is, is going to last much longer on the Dolphins, especially after this. I mean, it's just absolutely embarrassing. It's a total fucking joke. This regime is destroying this franchise in absolutely every way possible. Um... Right, so I also told you that the uh, the Patriots' defensive statistics were going to rise. They did tremendously, but we'll get into that in a minute. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, right? There's there's this tweet uh, Dar from Daryl Reuter, uh, 59 to 10, 43 to 0. Dolphins not only committed to the Browns' rebuild plan, but going next level on the scoreboard. 0-16 is on the table through two games with a 92-point different, a negative 92-point differential. But can they go 1 and 34 or 1 and 31 or 4 and 4? Now, first of all, this is not a rebuild. This is not even close to a rebuild. This is a full-on multi-year tank that will take several years to recover from. It's absolutely absurd. Um, I mean, it's just. It's just disaster after disaster after disaster, man. And look, dude, I, I told y'all, I've been, I've been, I've been spelling this out, you know, and, and everybody wants to like get up on me and, and like, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people. And it's cool. Like I get it, you know, dude, look, there are people that just want to live in this alternate reality. They want to like, they want to convince themselves that it's that, you know, their eyes are lying to them and and that it's not true and that it can't be true and blah, 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 blah. But it's right there, man. I've been saying it. I've been the only one that's been saying it. And look, I mean, it needs to, it needs to, for this, for this franchise to turn around at this point, there needs to be a, a, a full cleaning of 
the, the regime, the entire regime needs to be rooted out and start all over. But what does that mean? It's not just the head coach and the coaching staff. It's not just um, the front office being Chris Greer and Marvin Allen. And I keep forgetting the other dude's name. But the other guy that they brought in to be a consultant or whatever. And it also means Steven Ross. And so for anybody who doesn't want to wait, because the, the NFL is not going to do anything about it. The NFL doesn't care. They rake in billions. It's probably, you know, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, it creates this massive spectacle, you know, and all this allure when they're starting, you know, when they've been, they've been losing, you know, uh, interest from people because they're destroying their game. They're completely fucking up the rule book. Just all, the NFL is doing all kinds of bad things right and and destroying it so they don't give a shit about this all they care about is money right so the nfl won't do anything stephen ross is not going to sell the team he's going to be stubborn and try and hold on to it until his dying wish uh or until his dying day rather um but i'm not willing to wait for any of that stuff so that's why i created a petition to get stephen ross to sell the team so look if, if you guys are frustrated and you want to see this this you know redone and like fundamentally rebuilt the right way it has to start with steven ross because even if you know i don't want to waste the next couple years on this bullshit and even if you get rid of the coaching staff in the front office you still have ross and he's the main problem he is the the he is the head of the fish that is rotting i mean so you know he needs to go too so if you guys you know want to get this look the only way that we could do it really realistically is to get you know a people powered fan base driven petition if there and if enough people sign it man i've got it it's live i'm putting the link to it down in all of my videos you know if you're still not quite convinced and you need to see a you know a few more games of this nonsense okay you know if, if you need to see more misery and despair and destruction okay um but whenever you're ready I'll be here to continue pushing this message and to continue exposing the truth. And, you know, like I said, the petition's there. So if you guys want to, you know, get into something and, and make the change to save our dolphins, then join me because we, we, we can't do it. I can't do it by myself. We have to do it together. Anyway, let me get into this, though, because uh, uh, there's, there's still a lot more to go. Uh, real quick. So let me see if I can find the um, the inactives for the game. I wanted to make sure to give you the inactives. So the Dolphins inactives were running back Miles Gaskin, linebacker Trent Harris, safety Rashad Jones, tackle Isaiah Prince, center guard Chris Reed, wide receiver Albert Wilson, and guard tackle Brian uh, Witzman. Um, not like any of them would have really helped anything, uh, because this regime has so depleted the roster of talent, of leadership, of production, um, of morale, just everything, right? So it's it's just it's the just the biggest disaster it could possibly be. Anyway, those are the inactives. Let me start getting through uh, these statistics because this the, the statistics just bear it out, you know. Everything that I've been saying, the statistics back me, the facts back me. So, uh, and that's that's the perspective I'm going to keep coming from. So let's see. The Dolphins are now 0-2 on the season, um, which also gives us a divisional loss. Uh, the Patriots. Oh, by the way, the, that that whole uh, and and this just goes to prove that that whole. Um, you know, superstition bullshit about, oh, well, you know, Brady and the Patriots don't play well down in Miami and they, they get, uh, victimized by the heat and so on and so forth. Actually, we got victimized by the heat as it turned out, even though they were sitting in the sun because the, the unit that got affected the most was our defense. As of course, I've been saying this whole time was going to happen. Um, but all, I, I've been telling you all of that is a myth and the reason why is because it just depends but and a lot of people want to ignore this right they don't want to admit this um, it's you know it makes them cringe it, it triggers them you know or whatever and fine whatever 
you know, if, if this kind of shit triggers you, then have at it. You can cry yourself to sleep somewhere else. I don't really give a shit, okay? Uh, but what are the two common factors, right? Because everybody coming into this game, so many were people were talking about uh, and trying to use it as a defense or, you know, some some intangible thing to cling to, to hang your hat on is a reason why we could have possibly won this game, right? Um, it's a, it's a fucking myth, dude. But the, the two things that, that were there those five out of six times when we did beat them at home was at least an average talented team with, uh, you know, solid leadership, you know, maybe okay depth right? Not just a completely across the board depleted team. They didn't have the kind of dissension and morale issues that are clearly uh, permeating through the locker room right now. You didn't see the massive purges or anything like that. And the one that really is going to make everybody else uncomfortable because nobody wants to admit that he was able to do this but Ryan Tannehill was the other key consistent factor there. He was there for almost all of those games and he consistently helped the team win and helped elevate the team above the Patriots and allowed them to win those games. A lot of people don't want to admit it. They want to, and I'm sure there's going to be tons of hate in the comment section because people are going to get triggered. And guess what? I'm gonna read all of your triggered comments. I'm gonna ignore them, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm not, as in, I'm not gonna respond to them, but I'm gonna get a good old laugh because I find it fucking hilarious. Like, I mean, if people insist on living in this just crazy, crazy alternate reality, then fine, man. Like, I can't help you. I don't know what you want from me. You know, it just, if, I mean, if you just so blatantly and brazenly decide to ignore facts, stats, and reality and logic and reason I'm sorry I can't help you I can't help you anyway I've actually said the vast majority of the the analysis that I really want to say aside from the actual statistics so again Dolphins now 0-2 also a divisional loss uh, Patriots are now 2-0 and well let's see uh, we didn't score a single point as I mentioned not only did we get blown out not only did they cover the spread which coming into this game was almost at historic levels, right? Not only did they cover the 19 and a half point spread, they beat us by 43 points. Because they scored 43, we scored zero. Okay, let's continue on. Total yardage, we had 184, they had 381. Passing yards, we got a whopping 142, they were at 255. Now to be fair, According to my preferred metrics, you know, I would say that the Patriots, you know, would uh, ideally like to get over 300. They didn't get that. So you can count that as a knock if you like, but that clearly didn't really matter or make a difference. They still vastly outperformed us. Let's see, rushing yards. Oh, well, man, we had 21 last week. Look at that. We managed to double it to 42. Such progress. Absolutely amazing. But, well, you know, we managed to also give up 126 rushing yards. Oh, but look, I think we were, what, four point something yards per play last week? We kind of downgraded this week. We were only three yards. But we allowed uh, greater yards because the, the other team last week, I think, was four something. Patriots this week, 5.9. Didn't lose any fumbles. That's good. That's a bright side. Oh, look, and the Patriots did lose one. Sony Michelle did... Uh, did uh, lose a fumble. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick caused it. He uh, also recovered it. Minka Fitzpatrick did do some things. He was, you know, one of the uh, bright spots on this team. But, you know, he's probably just trying to put some good film out there so that way, you know, he can entice a suitor so that way he can get the fuck out of Dodge as soon as possible. Uh, but look, you know, we didn't give away any fumbles, but man, damn. Four interceptions. Ryan Fitzpatrick threw three. Josh Rosen threw one. Two of them were pick sixes. Good job, Fitzpatrick. Good job, Regime. Good job, Chris Greer and Brian Flores. You guys are doing so good. Okay, continuing on. Uh, third down conversion rate. How did we do? Oh, let's see. 13%. 
we almost set a franchise worst record for number of first downs in a game. Uh, the worst we've ever done was six. We got over that a little bit, but we only got to eight. For a lot of the game, we were super close to getting that. Not a good look. Oh, but look, we managed to let them convert 54% of the time. Congratulations. Oh, and you know, um, Brian, again, Brian Flores is supposed to be this super mastermind, right? But super confusing decisions that make no sense. Terrible football decisions, like almost across the board. And now look at your performances, bro. Like, come on, for real. Okay, let's see. We had the ball for 23 minutes and 30 seconds. They had it for 36 minutes, 30 seconds. We had four penalties. They had five. Ah, uh, okay, whatever. Um, although I'm pretty sure that we did have more. I think a couple of them got uh, declined, and I think they don't count declined. Um, I'm pretty sure that is a little off. Uh, I'm pretty sure we had, we absolutely definitely had more than four penalties because there were at least like two or three holdings on the offensive line. There were also at least two or three like pass interferences and holding holdings on our defense. So that number is not exactly accurate. There were definitely uh, a few more than that, but I don't think that that includes the penalties that were declined for whatever reason. Okay, let's break into the passing statistics. Josh Rosen technically statistically led the way. He was 7 of 18 for 39% completion percentage for 97 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception, and a 33.8 passer rating. And of course, he got destroyed when he was in there. He took many big hits, not his own fault, uh, just because, as I've been saying, this offensive line is going to be trash. And then, once again, as I've been saying, the quarterbacks are going to severely be exposed. Let's see, how did Ryan Fitzpatrick do? Well, uh, 11 for 21 for 52.4 completion percentage, 89 yards, 3 interceptions, and a 23.8 passer rating. Also, let's note that there are reports out now that the Dolphins may be making a quarterback switch going into game three and that they may be starting Josh Rosen. Let's see. I seem to recall there being somebody who made a prediction that uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick would start somewhere between two to four games and he would be relieved of his duties um, somewhere in that window due to the fact that he either got hurt uh, because he got pummeled so bad or because he performed so abhorrently that they were going to make the switch. Now, you know, I really, honestly, I, as much as I foresee, uh, foresaw this, this travesty, you know, coming, I just, I didn't really, uh, you know, there was no way I, I could have really understood the depths of which that they were going to go to and how far they were going to, to, to tear us down. And so, um, you know, that's why I gave myself a little bit of a window there. You know, I didn't think it would go this fast. And it's not a for sure thing yet to, to be fair um, and to be accurate, but uh, there are reports now. So it looks like after two games, Rosen might begin getting subbed in because, well, Ryan Fitzpatrick played so poorly behind this terrible offensive line. But don't think it's going to get any better. It's not going to get better for Rosen, and it's going to continue. There's going to be more dissension. He's going to continue to lose the locker room. Guys are going to get even more disengaged. We're going to have more injuries. The defense is going to continue to get worn out and worn out and worn out. The offense is going to continue to uh, severely underperform. And I've been saying it this whole time. And I'm going to continue to say it as long as the facts continue to bear it out. I've been predicting it for months now. And the facts are now backing me up after just two games. Let's see, how did Tom Brady do? Tom Brady was 20 for 28, 71.4 completion percentage, 264 yards, two touchdowns, and a 124.7 passer rating. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, they also had two defensive scores and I think, what, one rushing score? So they were all over the place, man. They were doing work. They were doing work today. We came up, or we came out there and, 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 
And look, I mean, because I can't blame the players. It's not them. It's it's the fault and the and the and the the blame rests on the the power structure. It's not the the powerless players on this team. They didn't have any fucking say in this, right? And frankly, they should, you know, revolt. They should protest this bullshit, right? Just like I advocate for fans not to go to games or buy merchandise because you shouldn't support this. You shouldn't support this kind of fucking, you know, uh, brazen bullshit. You shouldn't support a process of tanking. It doesn't work in the NFL. You shouldn't, and and even if it did, you really even shouldn't because it's it's just, it is disrespectful to the fans, to the game, all that stuff. I actually do believe that. But our co coach, of course, decides he wants to lie to everybody's face and just say that we're not, even though it couldn't be more obvious. But there are, of course, still people out there who are just, you know, in denial, living in this false reality. So, you know, whatever. And they, they, they continue to make excuses for him. So, again, like I said, it, you know, how many times is it going to take? And, you know, I mean, if you never get there, then, well, I can't help you. Let's get into rushing statistics. Kenyon Drake technically led the way for us. He had six rushes for 19 yards, 3.2 average. Mark Walton had three rushes, 15 yards, and a five average. Fitzpatrick added one rush for six yards, obvious six average. Kalen Village was four rushes, uh, six yards, and one and a half average. And Jakeem Grant had one rush, negative four yards, and of course a negative four average. Sony Michelle to juxtapose our run game to theirs. Sony Michelle had 21 rushes for 85 yards, one touchdown and a four average. Rex Burkhead had five rushes, 21 yards and a 4.2 average. James White was three rushes, 10 yards and a 3.3 average. Receiving, Preston Williams led the way for us. Good job, rookie. Four of six for 63 yards. Kenny Drake was five of six for 29 yards. Durham Smythe, one of one for 24. Jakeem Grant, three of seven for 22. Alan Hearns, one of two for 13. Mark Walton, one of two for 12. And Mike Gesicki, one of two for 11. Let's see, Antonio Brown, the new star. And I mean, they had far too many weapons to cover. We don't we don't have the manpower now because you got rid of so many guys needlessly. Kiko, TJ, Vincent Taylor, uh, you know, you let Cam Wake walk and you let fucking, I mean, just so many, it, it's just, it's absurd. Uh, but let's see, Antonio Brown led the way for them. Uh, four out of eight targets, 56 yards and a score. Julian Edelman had four of four. Uh, 51 yards. Rex Burkhead was 2 of 2 for 47. Philip Dorsett, 3 of 3 for 39. Matt Lacoste, 2 of 2 for 33. Josh Gordon, 2 of 5 for 19. And James White was 3 of 4 for 19 and a score. As I mentioned, we didn't lose any fumbles. Congratulations, guys. Uh, I guess that's something to celebrate. Uh, Sony Michelle did uh, fumble and did lose one. Defensive statistics, Jerome Baker led the way for us. Seven solo tackles, five assisted. Bobby McCain had five solo, two assisted. Minka Fitzpatrick had four solo, two assisted. A forced fumble and a fumble recovery, as I mentioned before. Putting on a little bit of a highlight tape for people uh, who are su suitors. And by the reports I've seen, there are many, many teams looking to trade for him. Somewhere around 20 was the highest that I saw it. Um, but definitely several teams for sure, including the Cowboys who we go to play next week. And there is even talk that he might even get traded by this week. I mean, like, I do think that Minka Fitzpatrick, unfortunately, will no longer be a Dolphin in the very near future. I did also say that I think that there is a high probability, prob probability he gets traded this week. If he got traded and then he got, but he got traded to the Cowboys... And then he ended up, you know, getting there and being able to play for the game. Whether he does or not, just being there and able to. Like, I mean, how more, like, obvious could it be that you're, like, tanking? Not only would you be getting rid of another pillar of your team, but then you would be training them to the enemy for that week. To the team that you're about to play. Now, obviously, that hasn't happened yet. That's all speculation. I'm just saying, at this point, I wouldn't put it past this regime. Let's continue. Eric Rowe was, uh, had three solo tackles, two assisted with two passes defense. Xavier Howard had three solo, one assisted. 
uh, with one pass defense. Jamal Wiltz had three solo, one assisted. John Jenkins had one solo, one sack, and one tackle for loss. And uh, look at this. Vince Beagle, congratulations. He had uh, one solo tackle, one sack, and one tackle for loss. Um, which technically... I, that that's kind of misleading right because there's three statistics there one tackle one solo tackle one sack and one tackle for loss but they're all the same statistic he got a sack which obviously counts as a tackle and also a tackle for loss since it was behind the line of scrimmage but good for him so now his grand total is four tackles on his career one of which happens to also be a sack and a tackle for loss congratulations I mean, we had Kiko Alonso who had over 550 career tackles, uh, 16 passes defensed, 10 interceptions, including uh, a, a, a defensive score, a bunch of forced fumbles. You know, uh, he had the veteran leadership and the production, you know, whatever. None of that matters. And, you know, the fact that you trade a guy like that for a guy who now updated statistics for his career has four tackles, including one of those being a sack slash tackle for loss. Well, I mean, how do people say we're not tanking? It's it's not just and it's not just this year. This is a multi year tank and we're not going to recover for, from it for several years. Bet. Quote me now or hear me now. Quote me later. Uh, but let's move on. Jamie Collins led the way for them. Three solo tackles, two assisted with a half sack and a tackle for loss. Two interceptions for 74 uh, yards, including a score and two passes defensed. Alandon Roberts had three solo tackles, two assisted. Jason McCourty had three solo, one assisted. Adam Butler, three solo, two sacks, two tackles for loss and a pass defense. Patrick Chung had three solo tackles, a tackle for loss. Jonathan Jones had two solo, two assisted with a pass defense. Chase Winovich had one solo, one assisted, one and a half sacks and a tackle for loss. Devin McCourty had one solo, one assisted, one interception and a pass defense. JC Jackson had a solo, one assisted tackle and a pass defense. Michael Bennett, one solo tackle, one sack, one tackle for loss. Danny Shelton, one solo tackle, one sack, one tackle for loss. John Simon, one solo tackle, one sack, and a pass defense. Jo uh, Stephon Gilmore had two assisted tackles with an interception uh, of 54 yards, which resulted in a touchdown, and three passes defense. And Kyle Van Noy added a pass defense. So as you can see, their defense was all over the place, just shutting our offense down almost all over the place. Um, almost entirely, right? Um, and as I said, I was right. Those defensive statistics of the Patriots definitely went up um, quite considerably. And, you know, again, our defense did do some good things. They held the Patriots a couple times. But, of course, I was right when I said that they were going to be on the field for far too long. They were going to get winded. They were going to start getting gashed, which they did, start letting up big plays. And the good things that they did were going to be negated and overshadowed by the, the uh, you know, just abhorrent, you know, disgusting performance from the offense and, you know, yada, 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 right? Kicking game, Jason Sanders. Oh, well, um, yeah, he, he actually, he didn't do anything. He just kind of hung out today, you know, mulled around on the sideline because he was never called upon. Uh, there was no need for it um, because we didn't score any points. We didn't kick any field goals, um, so we didn't have any attempts. We didn't score any touchdowns, so there was no reason for any points after. Which, um, you know, is it, it just it just goes to show you though. Uh, how bad we really were because Steven Goskowski even had a pretty tough day. He missed one of his two field goals, uh, had a long of 28, and he missed two of his six extra points. But there's a field goal and six touchdowns there. So, you know, in a lot of situations, if a kicker misses one, uh, you know, misses a field goal and two extra points, um, there's a good possibility that that team with that kicker could lose the game. 
but no chance when you're going up a game or when you're going up a, against a team that, you know, is like Division Two quality. Division One, you know, college level at best. And that's kind of a pipe dream. Continue on. Uh, in the punt game, Matt Hawk had seven punts. Seven punts for a 42.6 average. Two inside the 20. We went three and out constantly with a long of 54. Jake Bailey only had three. Uh, an average of 48. Kind of modest. Oh, but wait. Hey, uh, you know, that's interesting. He had three punts. All of them were inside the 20. And he had a long of 53. Kickoff return, Jakeem Grant only had one. It was an impressive run, so good on him. That's, again, if you want to find some, you know, middling shining star there or, sh or silver lining, whatever. He had one, one kickoff return for 39 yards. Uh, so good. Good on him. It didn't do shit for us, obviously, but, you know, good on him. Uh, in the punt game, Jakeem Grant had two. And on the flip side here, he had two... Uh, with a two and a half average, along a five, so not really much there. Gunner Oz or Gunner Olszewski had three uh, for the Patriots had three punt returns with a three average and along of six. So, like I said, guys, um, I mean, this is this is what it is now. This is what happens under the leadership of Stephen Ross. And even more so under the leadership of, uh, you know, Chris Greer and uh, Brian Flores um, and everybody else associated with the front office and this power structure. And man, like if you if you still want to argue at this point, you know, that there's going to be some miraculous turnaround, things are going to get better and someday we'll be competitive again perhaps after just burning the house down and then rolling the dice on whether like it's like it's literally like if you had and i thought of this before it's like if it's like if you had your family right and your family's in the house right and you light the or you light the fucking thing on fire you light the house on fire and then you literally just like hang out somewhere in the house hoping that maybe possibly you don't get burned up and somehow manage to survive without catastrophic like wounds. Like that is that is the level to which this organization, this regime has taken this so-called, uh, you know, some people want to say a, a rebuild. It's for sure a multi-year uh, tank that can't be recovered from for several years uh, but I mean it's just it's an absolute debacle and again historically bad two straight games again I was correct on that two straight games being I was correct that we were going to get shellacked and probably continue to be to be fair I you know said something along the lines of will probably be historically bad again but I was proven it and so look man I even tried to go into this game at the beginning of my live stream and be like you know look I'm gonna give them three strikes right three strikes I'm gonna try and give them the benefit of the doubt. They have another opportunity to prove me wrong and the things that I've been saying wrong, but I'm gonna give them three strikes. And if they go three straight games of getting blown out, then I'm just, I can't give them the benefit of the doubt anymore, right? Like I can't, I mean, I already know, like I already know, I already know how this is gonna turn out, but I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt for all those people out there that just insist on, you know, denying reality. So I'm trying to help y'all out. But at some point, man, you got to wake up. You got to wake up. Anyway, the final thing I want to say before I get up out of here, guys, is again, if you guys want to see the change, we have to do it. It has to be a people-led, uh, people uh, people-powered, you know, fight and 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 push and protest and revolution man it has to be from the fan base 
primarily. I mean, we can get, you know, allies from other NFL fans and stuff who want to, you know, see some some shit change and maybe even help to push out the, you know, the corporate greed from the NFL. You know, we can we can push to fight that that fight at a later date, you know, and work our way up to that. But, you know, in this particular battle, it's going to have to come from the Dolphins fan base primarily. But the only way we're going to do it, man, is, is together. And uh, so that's why, one more time, um, I, you know, my petition is live. It's a petition to get Stephen Ross to sell the team. And obviously, if Stephen Ross sells the team, then the new owner will strip everything down and completely, you know flush out the uh the front office and the the entire power structure and start from new and then that's what we need and then we need to give that a shot uh because this is obviously not working so if you guys if you guys want to see that change and if you want to be part of it um i absolutely welcome you and you definitely should the i put the i will be putting the link uh, I won't necessarily be mentioning it in all my videos. I don't want to be cumbersome with it, but uh, I am going to talk about it regularly and I am for sure going to have the link to the petition in all of uh, my videos in the description box. So that way you guys can just click on it and go there and it's just online. You just sign your name online if you want to see the change and if, if you want to push for this. He, again, he's not going to do it on his own. The NFL doesn't give a shit. It's a spectacle to them. They enjoy the circus. It brings in money, especially if fans, you know, just blindly follow what they say and continue to fucking pump money into them, right? So it's it's gonna be up to us, guys. And you know, I'm, I'm here trying to lead the way, and but I can't do it myself, and I need y'all. So let's do it together. And so with that, guys, I am going to get up out of here. I really appreciate everybody that jumped in the live stream and, and you know, jumped in the chat and, and you know, whatever, and, and joined me for the game. Again, man, it's going to be it's going to be a struggle, but we'll do it together. We'll get the change together. And uh, but I appreciate everybody. And so with that, guys, I hope you do enjoy my videos and my perspective and all this stuff that I bring to you. Um, and if you do please make sure you hit the subscribe button that is the most important thing also though make sure that you share this with your friends and family share the channel share the streams when they're up post it on 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 you know facebook and twitter on you know post it on your social media spread it out there because i need your help to grow also make sure that you, you hit the the like button on the videos and stuff that really helps the channel um also, make sure that you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts for the videos. Make sure you leave your questions, your comments, and your concerns down in the comment section. I love to interact with you. And, of course, always in the live stream, too. And then, as always, as usual, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.